Hi, welcome to my third look at the Christmas 2023 weather prospects. At the time of filming, there are still three weeks to go until the big day itself. In other words, that's a very, very long time in weather terms, so things are still extremely speculative. Plenty of time for change. But before getting going on this, I just wanted to highlight a couple of things. Firstly, my brand new for 2023 jumper. I hope you like it. I hope the snowman will bring some good luck. Secondly, just a very, very brief reminder of what a white Christmas is. I'm not going to labour the point. You can watch one of my earlier updates if you want to know more. But that may be a green Christmas. That may be a white one. It's all down to the definition. Okay, on to the analogues, and I'm going to be using the seven day updates rather than the 30 day ones this week because there have been quite a lot of changes recently and in the shorter range analogues, those are bubbling up to the surface very, very quickly. What they do is compare the state of the Northern Hemisphere through the last seven days with the same period in each year going back to 1948. Here are the top five, starting in fifth position, 1978, a very famous winter, 78, 79, one of the coldest of the 20th century. It became known as the winter of discontent because of the political and industrial upheaval which was taking place in the UK. But Christmas Day didn't coincide with one of the colder periods, as can be seen here. There is some blue shading indicating cold air over Scotland, but for much of the UK, the greens there are pointing towards a closer to average picture. Nonetheless, it's very interesting to see this winter popping up so highly in the analog table, at least at the moment. Number four, 1996, another one which is worth looking at because high pressure air centered over Scandinavia and some very cold air making its way across Central and Western Europe towards the UK. We're just on the edge of it, as is often the case but the blue indicates quite a cold picture. Probably dry in much of the country, but there may have been a few snow flurries around, I would have thought. Onwards to number three, 2017. Much more recent. It was also quite a notable winter because 2017-18 brought what became known as the Beast from the East in February and March. Often forgotten, though, is that we had some heavy snow in the middle of December, about 10 days before Christmas, if I recall correctly. Here in the Chilterns, it's about 15, 20, uh, 20 centimetres deep, but it had melted away by December 25th. And as can be seen here, low pressure there to the north, a fairly typical and relatively mild setup across the country. So not a white Christmas for the vast majority of us. Onwards, and in number two position, 2009, a very cold winter, in fact, the coldest since 1978-79, which we just looked at. But by Christmas Day itself, although there had been a lot of snow in a week or so before it, certainly here in the Chilterns, we had two heavy falls, one on the 18th, another on the 22nd. But by the 25th, temperatures were rising, the snow was melting, but there was still quite a lot on the ground. So... Although it may not technically have been a white Christmas, there was plenty of snow in much of the UK at that point. So, what is in position at number one? Which year? 1965. And unfortunately, or fortunately, it's before my time. But the reanalysis chart shows quite a chilly picture. Um, low pressure here, probably pulling away eastwards. And blue shading moving down from the north cold air. So temperatures there would have been below average, I expect. There could well have been some sleet or snow showers around in places, particularly in the northern half of Britain. The analogues, therefore, are relatively promising this week. Very, very notable to see both 1978-79 and 2009-2010 appearing in the top five matches. Also, 1981 is quite high up it doesn't, it's not in the top five, but in the league table, I think it was about number 10 or thereabouts yesterday. So there are some very cold winters which are appearing in the shorter range analogues at the moment. On to the computer model data. I'm going to take a look at the GEFS 35 day charts first. 
Here is the 850 HPA temperature plot for London. So these are forecast values at about 1500 meters above sea level. The thick back line is a 30 year norm, the, the uh, thick purple one, the ensemble mean. Christmas day, just somewhere around here on the edge of the uh, greyed out area. It's just moving left every week. We're getting closer and closer to the big day. But unfortunately, it's not good news if it's cold weather you're hoping for. The ensemble mean there, a little bit above the 30 year average, certainly doesn't suggest anything out of the ordinary. And that correlates quite nicely with forecast temperatures at the two meter level, so the ones which we actually experience. The two red lines there, maximum and minimums on each of the given days are a little bit above the thick black line. So if anything, the suggestion here is that a rather mild Christmas would be odds on. Up to Glasgow to see if there's anything different in the north. The positive anomaly here is a little bit weaker perhaps than on the London chart and likewise on the two meter uh, temperature chart as well. But it doesn't look cold. Maybe snow over the Scottish mountains would be a distinct possibility. But down at low levels, I think a green Christmas for most if these are right. The anomaly charts for the week beginning the uh, 24th, so Christmas Eve. 850 HPA temperature anomalies here. The pink shading over UK indicates positive. It's only a degree or two above the 30 year average through the week as a whole, but it certainly does not support the idea of a cold spell. And neither does the pressure anomaly chart here. Blues, light blues just to the west, slightly below average pressure. Orange and browns there to the east, which point towards high of an average pressure. So there are some hints of encouragement perhaps because high of an average pressure over Scandinavia could always open the door to colder air coming in from the east but that's not really what is being shown here. I think we probably have low pressure areas knocking on the door and I think the cold block of air would be too far east to be influencing our weather. So not a positive picture from the GEFS which is the North American Ensemble that's running the United States. The comparable data from the European Ensemble, two meter temperature anomalies. This is actually for the week beginning Christmas day, so one day later, but very, very similar. Pink shading there, above the norm for the week as a whole, and the pressure anomalies for the same period. Blues to the north, low of an average. Oranges, browns to the south, slightly high of an average. There could be quite a tight pressure gradient across the UK and coming in from the west. That means rain's never going to be far away. The tight pressure gradient may well indicate strong winds or at least an increased chance of strong winds coinciding with Christmas Day, Christmas, the Christmas period at least. So the computer model data is not encouraging. I'm going to try and summarize. The analogues taken in isolation are actually quite encouraging if you're hoping for a white Christmas. On the other hand, the computer models are not because they point towards close to or above average temperatures and typical pressure patterns. So what is my white Christmas score this week? Well, just as a reminder, on my last update, I gave one out of five, the lowest possible. Have I increased it this time? Here goes. Yes, I have. I've gone up to two out of five. So not a huge change, but the analogs just pushed things up there a little bit. I have been surprised to see some of those cold winters showing up so highly in recent updates. Maybe they'll drop out through the coming days. We'll see. And I'll review that in my next update, probably another two or three before Christmas Day itself. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. It is still just a bit of fun at this range, of course, but if you did, then consider hitting the like button below. Also, subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. Thank you for watching. Bye now.